this is part two of the tutorial on multiplying and dividing rational numbers. For part two, we're going to focus on dividing rational numbers. If you don't remember what rational numbers are, there's kind of a hint in the word rational itself. They're just numbers that you can express as the ratio. So comparing two numbers like a fraction would. So one fourth is a ratio of one to four. But it's also a number that is in between zero and one on a number line. So you have to remember fractions are more than just parts out of a total. They're also actual numbers that are part of the way in between whole numbers. And there's our one fourth. Okay. I think fractions are some of the least understood concepts, especially when it comes to division. So I'm going to try to give you a story today that will hopefully help you understand a little bit more about dividing fractions. The story begins like this. I brought two candy bars with me to work today. And what I planned to do was share the candy with my friends. But I got a little hungry at lunch and I ate half of one of the candy bars. So it was delicious, plus minus chocolate almond. I only regret it a little bit. Now that that half is gone, I am determined to share the rest of this with my friends. So how much candy do I have to share with them? How many candy bars? You can see I don't have two anymore. I just have one and a half. And I want to share the candy bars with all my friends, but I'm not really sure how big to cut the pieces so that every friend gets one. So I just kind of started cutting them into one quarter size pieces. So basically each candy bar was cut into fourths. And the way I did that was I cut it in half. And then I knew that a fourth is just half of a half. So I have a fourth here and I have a fourth here. And in fact, to have one candy bar, I would need four fourths. So here are four fourths. To cut this one into fourths, it wasn't a fourth of what I had left, it was a fourth of a whole candy bar. So I only had a half left, which meant I just needed to cut that in half once to get my fourth. And you'll notice all the quarter size pieces are the same size. That's because they're all a fourth of a total candy bar. So after I'd cut those into quarter size pieces, then I could see how many friends I was able to share my candy with. And assuming that I'm satisfied with the half that I ate, half a candy bar that I ate, um, I noticed that I could share now with six friends. The problem that we just solved was one and a half candy bars divided by a fourth. So think of it like one and a half divided into quarter size pieces. How many one fourths will fit in one and a half? So we took one and a half and figured out how many one fourths there were in there. Now that was kind of a guess and check way to figure out how much candy to give my friends. I just cut them into fourths because that was what I, I thought was easy and what I thought I knew how to do. But let's say that I knew from the get-go that I wanted my one and a half candy bars to be shared by my six friends. Now just based on what we already know, we're pretty confident that they're going to be quarter size pieces. <laughs> but let's see if we can figure that out mathematically. So if I have one and a half candy bars again, and I'll go ahead and just go back to my original. Here's my one and a half candy bars. And I want to divide them or split those candy bars between my six friends. I want to cut them into six pieces. So if I want to cut them into six pieces, I have to start by getting some common size pieces. So right now, I have one, two, three pieces, and they're all the same size. They're all a half. But that would only feed three friends. So I'm going to cut them again. So I'm going to split it there, and there, and there. And now that I've done that, I see I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, which is what I wanted. I have six friends. So that's the right way to cut it. And now I just have to figure out how big each of those pieces is. 
So I cut it in half, I cut it in half again. I can see that each piece is one fourth of the total, okay? So each piece is a quarter of a candy bar. And so if you take a look at these two problems, when you took one and a half and divided it by a fourth, you were cutting it into quarter sized pieces, whereas here you were cutting it and splitting it six ways. So I see this as the type of problem where we are splitting something, we're sharing, okay? Just like in, just like in kindergarten, you learned that you needed to share. But I see this as saying how many one-fourths will fit into one and a half. And if you ask yourself those kind of questions when you see a division problem, it'll become a little bit more obvious what to do with it. But we don't always want to have to come up with a context for every problem, and we certainly don't want to have to draw a diagram for every problem. So let's see if we can do this problem without using pictures. So one and a half candy bars is the same thing as, here's one candy bar, oops, that's about the same size, and here's half a candy bar, okay? Now I want pieces that are all the same, so I'm going to take my one and a half candy bars and just cut them all in half, okay? So how many halves do I have? And I want you to think about that for a second. Here's half of a candy bar, here's half of a candy bar, and here's half of a candy bar. How many halves do I have? And you can see that I have three halves. Okay. Well, the other way to think about that is if I cut a hole, this hole right here, into halves, that would be two pieces, plus the one half, or plus the one piece I had over here, would give me three pieces that are each a half of a candy bar. So what you might have learned as a way to do that is you take the denominator and you multiply it by the whole number. So two times one is two. And then you add the numerator. So two times one is two, plus that one is three. That becomes your new numerator. And they're still cut in half. So you can see here I have three halves, and this is the algorithm or the procedure that you use to get it. So I have three halves now being divided by one-fourth. You can actually multiply uh, and divide in several different ways. And um, the algorithm that we use or the procedure that we use is just one that's kind of been agreed, up agreed upon by math teachers and math students for a long time as being one of the simpler ones. So I'm going to show you that to start with, but then I'm going to show you another way. Um, and, and maybe you might find that it's that it's a little bit easier for you or just something different that you can try if, if a problem presents itself as being easier to solve that way. So I'm going to take the three halves and divide it by one fourth. But dividing by fractions is very difficult. So instead of dividing by one-fourth, what we do is we multiply by the reciprocal of one-fourth. And reciprocal just means we're going to flip our fraction over. So what's on top will go on bottom. What's on bottom will go on top. So the reciprocal of one-fourth is four over one. So we're going to be taking three halves and multiplying it by four over one. Now if you do that, you'll notice 3 times 4 is 12, 2 times 1 is 2, and 12 halves can be simplified to be 6. We found that there were 6 friends that I could split my candy with if I cut it into quarter size pieces. So this traditional algorithm, um, first you make all mixed numbers into fractions. I call them common fractions. Some people may call them improper fractions, but you turn the mixed numbers into fractions. That's essential. And then 
instead of dividing by a number, you multiply by its reciprocal. So you flip around whatever you're dividing by, and then you multiply across. Another algorithm that you can use, um, although a little bit different, is one that will actually reinforce some of the skills you use when you add and subtract fractions. So when you add and subtract fractions, and I'm going to take this back to 3 halves divided by a fourth, when you add and subtract, you always have to get a common denominator. And we know that in multiplication and division, you don't have to, but you could. And I'm going to show you what that would do. If I have 3 halves and 1 fourth, I know that the common denominator is going to be 4. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by 2 over 2, which, you know, 2 over 2 cancels out. It would be 1, but it's just an equivalent way to express it. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times 2 is 4. So 3 halves is the same as 6 fourths. And I'm going to divide that by one fourth. Okay. We actually did a problem kind of like this in our homework um, the other day. It said that I have 12 twenty fifths of fabric and each dress uses four twenty fifths. So I'm taking the 12 twenty fifths and cutting it into or splitting it into four twenty fifth size pieces. <laughs> and we saw that that would be three dresses because 4 25ths three times makes 12 25ths. Well, do you also notice here that 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 25 divided by 25 is 1? So it becomes just like multiplication, where you just multiplied straight across. Well, here you can divide straight across. And the only caveat, the only exception, the only thing you have to remember is that you need a common denominator to do it. So if you look here, um, now that I have a common denominator, I can do 6 divided by 1, which is 6, and I can do 4 divided by 4, which is 1, and we know that 6 over 1 is really just 6, just another way of saying 6, and that agrees with the answer that we got using our traditional flip it and multiply methods, invert and multiply methods. Um, so either way will work. Sometimes getting a common denominator is more trouble than it's worth, and so you want to do this. But if you already have a common denominator, or it's really easy to get one, like here, you might find it easier to get that common denominator and then just divide, like top divided by top, bottom divided by bottom, and there's your answer. So there's two ways that you can divide with fractions, and really when it comes to this, Practice makes perfect. It's not going to come fast and easy at the beginning, but the more you do of it, the better you will get. So don't be surprised if you have to do several problems before you start to feel comfortable with it. So maybe now would be a good time to give you a few a try, and let me know if you need some help. Good luck!